Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. Now this is a continuation of my top 10, 15, 20, 30 albums from 1965 to 1989. And as normal I put up a poll of three years and in fact I put three of my least favourite years of the whole series, 1987, 88 and 89. And 1987 won with over 50% of the vote, so that is what we shall do. Okay, as normal, well, first of all, I actually put up Top 20 from 1987, and that was a typo. I meant to put up Top 15. However, we'll go with the Top 20. And as normal, I will give uh, three bubbling unders, and they are Toya and Desire. And this is the one with Echo Beach on it, and she does a version of Donna Summer's uh, Love Song Kind, which is good, but it's a bit pointless. The the single Moonlight Dancing is very good, and uh, the two best songs are Moon Migration and When a Woman Cries. Uh, the next bubbling under is Bruce Springsteen's Tunnel of Love. Now, I love the three singles, really do. It's the rest of the album I struggle a bit with. But I really do love Tougher Than The Rest. It's my favourite, all-time favourite Bruce Springsteen song. And Brilliant Disguise is up there. And I do like Tunnel of Love, even though it is quite dated. And things like Spare Parts and Ain't Got You are okay. They're not bad. And the third bubbling under is Brian Ferry's Bet Noir. And it had three singles with Limbo, Kiss and Tell and The Right Stuff. Incidentally, The Right Stuff was co-written by uh, Johnny Moore. And basically it's a lift from The Smiths, Money Changes Everything. It's the same track, but with lyrics. And another good song off that album is The Name of the Game as well as the title track. Okay, top 20 then. And my number 20, and as an artist I very, very rarely show. I've got two of his albums, and this is one of them. And it's John Hyatt and Bring the Family. And I love that cover. I think it's a bit freaky, like, but I really do love it. Um, this is essentially a little village album because it has Jim Keltner and uh, Nick Lowe and Ray Cooter on it. And this is a good album. There's some of the songs I'm not as keen on. Like Memphis in the meantime, and especially Alone in the Dark is a bit bluesy. However, where this really does work for me are the slower type songs. It is like an Ameri Americana type album, but the slower type songs like Lipstick Sunset, Stood Up, Have a Little Faith in Me and Tip of My Tongue I think are really, really good. It's a good album to have on whenever you're driving. Uh, but yeah, it deserves its number 20 place and that's Bring the Family by John Hyatt. At number 19, and it is actually the Eurythmics and Savage, and this is one of their most underrated albums for me. Uh, yeah, it has the fantastic single uh, Beethoven I love to listen to, which I think harks back to the early 80s Eurythmics, because the previous two albums, Be Yourself Tonight and Revenge, were very poppy with plenty of horns and so forth. This is it goes back to being a little bit more... Uh, experimental and a little bit more synthesized but um shame is a really good single from this it does have the dreadful i need a man which is shockingly bad um i've got a lover back in japan and do you want to break up the second and third tracks are really really good and then the beautiful you have placed the chill in my heart uh, so side one is really really good side two is not quite as good as i say it has i need a man on it but um, the track Brand New Day I think is very good. It's like an a cappella type of song. Well, the first minute and a half of it is, and then it goes into the full band. But yeah, it's a very, very good album, and it's probably the, one of their most underrated albums of the 80s, and it is um, Savage. So that gets my number 19. At number 18, and I have Gemini. And Geminism. Now, if you don't know who these guys are, it's uh, Anders and Karen Glenmark. And basically, Gemini for two albums were the outlet for Benny and Bjorn from ABBA. So they wrote the majority of the songs, not all of them, but the better ones, really. Um, yeah, it's a little bit cheesy at times, this album, and it is very dated, but I still do really like it. TLC, a Bjorn Benny song, is very dated, but I think it's good fun. Mio My Mio is gorgeous with the almost pan pipes in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. And Ghost Town, uh, another one of B&B's tracks, is one that would have been good for ABBA. It's a very ABBA type track. Uh, the ones written by Anders Glenmark are not quite as good, although Sniffing Out the Snakes is actually quite good. 
I do like I'm a Bitch When I See Red though, it's a pretty good song. This is their second album, I think their first is slightly better. But overall, if you take all the Ben and Bjorn tracks, you can, of the two of them, you can make a really good album. So Geminism gets my number 18. Okay, number 17, and we have Squeeze and Babylon and On. And this is the second album with the return of Jules Holland. Uh, the, the hit off this is Hourglass. In fact, there's loads of singles off this. Uh, the Waiting Game as a single is very good, as is uh, Trust Me Don't Mind My Mouth, not brilliant. Tough Love is a very, very good song. My favourite off here is Strike and Matches, which has um, vocals by Chris Difford. Um, there's loads of like, like accordion type music in it, I think it's just really, really good song. The, the album itself is, I think, a little bit um, dated in production. Uh, originally, I thought it wasn't as badly dated as Cozy Van Tutti Frutti. But now I think this is actually slightly more dated, uh, but still it's a decent album, it's not their best. Uh, other highlights are The Prisoner and Some Americans, decent songs. So Squeeze, Babylon and On gets my number 17. And number 16 and it's George Harrison and Cloud9 and this is his r return to form after the dreadful Gone Tropo says everybody apart from me because I actually do prefer Gone Trouble to this album but still this is not a bad album and in effect it's a Wilburys album it's the start of the Traveling Wilburys um, it starts off with Cloud Nine which is uh, quite a bit of a bluesy number to start with but it's not bad uh, that's what it takes is a decent song Fish in the Sand is the highlight of this and it is very Wilbury-esque uh, you get the big hit, Got My Mind Set On You, which I love, always have loved it. I know a lot of the George Harrison fans aren't that keen. And I'm not that keen on When We Was Fab, I think it's slightly uh, overrated. This Is Love has got a really good verse to it. It's the chorus that I think is a, lets it down a little bit, but it is a, a good track. Devil's Radio is really good fun. Breath Away From Heaven is a good song. It's a good album and it gets my number 16. At number 15 and we have Lloyd Cole and the Commotions and Mainstream and basically you know what you're getting with a Lloyd Cole and the Commotions album there's not a lot of difference between this and the previous two although I think the previous two are slightly better this does have three good singles off it my bag the opening single a bit of an odd choice but it's the best of the three songs from the hip is a really good track I think it was the third single and uh, Jennifer, she said, was the second single, I think possibly was the uh, most successful. But there are some really good tracks off this, like 29 is a good song. These days, the final track is really gorgeous, beautiful song. Now, the thing about Lloyd Cole is his voice can be a little bit throaty, especially whenever he starts singing sentences. So you get that sort of throaty uh, feel at the start, which at times maybe gets on my nerves a little bit. But still, um, it's a good album. Big Snake is another good song, as is the title track. So Mainstream by Lloyd Cole and Potions gets my number 15. At number 14, and you might think this is low, and it's Fleetwood Mac and Tango in the Night. Now this is riddled with hit singles, with uh, Big Love, which I do like. It's not one of my favourite Fleetwood Mac songs by a long way, but it's a decent song. Little Lies, I thought, was a little bit cheesy but I do quite like it. Uh, Everywhere is a really good pop song and Seven Wonders is the best single from this. Two other singles, Family Man should never have been released because it's not good enough and uh, Isn't It Midnight I think is a bit uh, boring, it's Christine McVie song. But there are other really good songs up here like Tango in the Night is a really good rocker by Lindsay. I do like Caroline which was originally slated to be on his uh, latest um, solo album but it went on to this instead my favorite track off this is actually when i see you again which is a stevie nicks song and it's a duet uh, it's acoustic duet with lindsay buckingham and i think it's really really good and you and i part two is very good you and i part one is actually the b-side of big love and it's a good track as well and there's a couple other songs that could have been on this like down endless street and ricky were b-sides and i think they should have been on this instead of especially Family Man. But it's a decent album. It is quite dated in sound and uh but of the all the Lindsay Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, uh Fleetwood Mac albums is the least for me, but I still like it. 
Okay, at number 13, and imagine this guy can't get in the top 10 for me, and it's David Bowie's Never Let Me Down, and yes, I do like this album, uh, but if you compare it to all the other Bowie albums, it falls really short. The best track off this is Glass Spider, even though I cannot stand the uh, narrated intro. I would just wish they had done something with that and taken it off completely and did a completely different intro to the song, because it's a brilliant track. Uh, day In Day Out I think is a good single, as is Time Will Crawl. Never Let Me Down I think was the most successful one in the States. It's it's good but it's a, a little cheesy. Uh, Beat, of, uh, Beat of Your Drum is a very very good track, as is 87 and Cry. Which shows away a little bit to the Tin Machine. It's got a more sort of heavy guitar riff to it. But there's a couple of real clunkers off here, like uh, Bang Bang is terrible as is New York's In Love, which is shocking. Too Dizzy is on this and it was dropped from all reissues of the album. I actually don't mind it. I don't think it was the worst track, but apparently Bowie thought it was embarrassing. So Never Let Me Down gets my number 13. At number 12 we have Chris Rea and Dancing With Strangers. Uh, yeah, this is a very, very good album. Um, this is when ever had his blonde hair. Uh, Joys of Christmas is single, didn't do too well. Good song though. Um, I Can't Dance to That is a great track. Windy Town got on to the uh, New Light from Old Windows album that came after this. Um, Gonna Buy a Hat's good. Let's Dance was the big hit off this, which I do like. Full of horns, but I do like. But my favourite track is another single called uh, Que Sera. Absolutely love it. It's one of my favourite Chris Rea tracks. Of all time and the single version is different I don't know which to prefer the problem with the single version is it's heavily edited although it is remixed but it's good I just wish it had been remixed and not heavily edited uh, Loving You Again is an absolutely beautiful song a very very good album uh, it's an artist I do like and I never tend to show very much on my channel so Chris Rea gets my number 12 and number 11 and I'm going to have to show a CD this time and it is R.E.M. and Document. This album took me a while to get into. I don't know why it did. I always loved the three big songs off it. Three huge songs for me as Finest Work Song, uh, With the End of the World as We Know It, which is Subterranean Homesick Blues Part 2, always thought. And the one I love, which I think Noel Gallagher nicked for uh, Morning Glory on his What's the Story Morning Glory album, or the Oasis. But there are really good tracks off this. It is very R.E.M.E. as acoustic -y and you can't understand half of what uh, Michael Stipe is singing. And I do like is it Mick Mills' backing vocals on a lot of these. Some of the ones I really like are strange because I think it's a punchy little number. I love the way the chorus really does go up and the backing vocals come in. Welcome to the Occupation is a decent song. Uh, Lightning Hopkins I think is a very very good track as is King of Birds, uh, Exhuming McCarthy. It's a good album. Um, I like it a lot more now than I did and it gets my number 11. At number 10 um, we have an album that gets slated by a lot of the fans and it's Ego and the Bunnyman and I don't understand why people don't really like this and compare it unfavorably to the previous albums because I think this is up there with um, well, I, I think it's better than Heaven Up Here, to be honest with you. But there's some really good tracks off here. The, the, the single, The Game, I've always loved, bought it when it came out. Lips Like Sugar is a very good track. Um, All In Your Mind, I think, is a, a good, decent sort of rockin' song. Lost and Found is your stereotypical Echo and the Bunnyman track. It's a good song. Uh, uh, Blue Blue Ocean is very, very good as a satellite. All My Life is a gorgeous track, but my favourite office is over you it should have been a single and i think it would have been a top 10 hit but this is a very very good album and it gets my number 10. okay at number nine and i am putting in pink floyd and a moment great lapse of reason and i am actually quite new to this album now i do like the track signs of life that opens up this album i think it is really good dogs of war um dave gilmore has got a more sort of gruffy voice on it which I think is very good as well. One Slip and On the Turning Away is very good. All Aside 2 is good.
But the track off here that I absolutely love is Learning to Fly. And it's one of my all time favourite Pink Floyd songs. I don't understand why this album gets slated. I don't think it sounds dated. I think it sounds really, really fresh. I know it's probably regarded as a Dave Gilmore solo album. But I suppose The Wall and the one, uh, the final cut, were regarded as Roger Waters' solo albums. But yeah, I think this is pretty good. I would guess my number nine. And number eight, and the band that saved the 80s for me, and it's their last album, and I can't put it any higher. And it's still a good album, it's The Smiths and Strange Ways, Here We Come. I do like the opener, um, A Rush and a Push in the Land That We Live In Is Ours. Uh, I started something I couldn't finish as a good Smith song, it's not a brilliant one, it's a good track. Uh, Death of a Disco Dancer, uh, I'd never liked it but I've got used to it a lot more. Girlfriend in the Coma is good, but stop me if you think you've heard this one before, I think it's awful. I just never ever liked it and I think it was covered by somebody that was actually quite a big hit about 10-15 years ago. Last Night I Dreamt That Somebody Loved Me is a good track, it was their last single. Not good enough to be a single, good LP track. On Happy Birthday is okay, not fantastic. Paint a, a Vulgar Picture is the one I loved at the start and it's, it's still pretty good. Death at One's Elbow, decent and I Won't Share You is gorgeous. Um, I like this, I just compare it with uh, The Queen is Dead and the debut and Meeting is Murder, it falls for me. But still, it's a decent enough album and it gets my number 8 so it must be good enough. And number 7 and these old rockers are back, I'm going to give to Slade, You Boys Make Big Noise. And funny enough, the, the track You Boys Make Big Noise was not on this, it was on the CD version as an extra track. And basically it's a copy of the Beastie Boys, You Wanna Fight For Your Right To Party. And with different lyrics, it's more or less the same sort of song. But this is really, really good. It's full of synth. It's very similar to their previous album, uh, Rogue's Gallery. But Love Is Like a Rock is a great one. Uh, that's what Friends Are For is a bit cheesy, but I love it. Still the same is one of my favourite of their scarf waving, uh, ballady type tracks. I think it is absolutely brilliant. Uh, She's Heavy is not bad. We Won't Give In is another really good track. And um, Won't You Rock With Me is your real fist pumping rock and roll song, really good. Ooh La La in LA, great. Sing, shout, knock yourself out, well you can imagine what that's like. Uh, the Roaring Silence I absolutely love as well, it's hard having fun nowadays. Really, really good album and it is their last album and so that's my number seven, Slade, You Boys Make Big Noise. Which apparently was, uh, the title came from uh, one of the cleaning ladies or maybe canteen staff, I, I'm not too sure, but they were rehearsing and um, whenever they finished she said to them, you boys make big noise and that's how the title came about. Okay, number six and we have Van Morrison and uh, Poetic Champions Compose and yeah, this is um, a very, very well recorded album. It's a beautiful album. Now there is little bits of jazz in this, which I'm not a jazz fan, but I don't mind it. Like the Spanish Steps, I think, is an instrumental, and I think it's a really good opener. The Mystery, I think, is a great track, although it reminds me of one other of the songs, and I'm not too sure of what. But you get three of the tracks in here that uh, actually got onto the best of Van Morrison from 1991. Queen of the Slipstream, which is a great. Uh, Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, and Did You Get Healed? Someone Like You is a really, really uh, beautiful little track. Uh, Give Me My Rapture has got a little bit of a country feel, a little bit more upbeat, really good. Allow Me, the final track is an instrumental and it's beautiful. Uh, this is such a good album. Um, it's just so easy to listen to and it's so relaxing and it's beautifully, as I say, recorded. So uh, Van Morrison's, one of his best of the year, he's actually a poetic champion to compose. So my number six. At number five and I have The Cars and Door to Door and this one gets slated as well and I don't understand why because I think it is brilliant. Leave or Stay opens, fantastic opener and then one of their best ever singles You Are The Girl, absolutely love it. Other highlights are Ta Ta Wayo Wayo, absolutely gorgeous song. 
Everything You Say Is Really Good, um, Coming Up You, I think was a single, should have done really well, didn't. Strap Me In, I'm not as keen on, it's one of those sort of rocky type songs. It's got a bit of a, a magic feel from their previous album, but it's not that great. Go Away is very, very good, Wound Up In You, beautiful song. Really, really good album, and um, it was their last one with Benjamin Orr, and they did one more, Move Like This, uh, must have been about 13 years later after it had passed. But still, a really good album, and most people put this down at the bottom. I don't, I put this mid-table card. Still very good, so that's my number five. And number four, and another one that always gets slated, but it's actually my favourite, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers album, and it's Let Me Up, I've Had Enough. Uh, two of my all-time favourite songs are in this, Runaway Trains, which is brilliant, and uh, How Many More Days, really, really good. Uh, Jammin' Me, which is co-written by Bob Dylan, is a really good opener. It'll all work out, it's a beautiful track, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Square One from Highway Companion. thing about me is a standard Tom Petty rocker, which is pretty good, um, all mixed up was a single excellent track and um, is from the time you'd know it was from 1987 but it's still very good and the title track itself let me up with had enough is excellent this is my favorite tom petty album don't know why always sort of veer towards this one and i would play this more than any of them so that gets my number four okay and number three and we have mike oldfield and islands and this too often gets slated as well, but it's one of my favourite of his of the 80s. Uh, side one is the big uh, track, The Wind Chimes, parts one and two, excellent. Side two has got five tracks off here on the CD, there's an extra one. Um, it starts off with Islands with Bonnie Tyler, which I think is very good, although I think I've preferred Anita Hegerlin to sing that. In fact, When the Night's on Fire is a version of that, which is the extra track which was sung by Anita Hegerland, which is the better song. Flying Start, absolutely brilliant track. Magic Touch, it's the weakest of the whole lot. Uh, North Point, beautiful one by Anita Hegerland, and as is the time has come, absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, in the 80s he did uh, quite a few albums of one song on one side and then five pop songs basically on the other. And this is probably my favourite of those, so my Goldfield Islands gets my number three. And number two, and we have The Proclaimers, and this is the story, and this is their debut album. Now this has a Letter from America on it, which was a top three hit for them, which is excellent. It has two versions now, it's got the single band version and an acoustic version, and the reason I'm saying that is that the rest of this album is all acoustic. Uh, the second single uh, was Make My Heart Fly, but the single version of it is not on here, it's just the acoustic version. But uh, you get Through the Hour Away, which was their debut single, which is really, really good. Over and Done With, excellent song, Misty Blue, beautiful. Uh, there's a cover version on this called I'm Gonna Burn Your Playhouse Down, which I think is great. But my favourite track off this is called Beautiful Truth. Uh, I just love the vocal interchange between the two guys. It's a really daring album just to have just acoustic music uh, no other instruments and maybe the odd tambourine here and there but that's about it so um, really really excellent album it's my second favorite from 1987 which means my favorite album of 1987 and it's not the best year but my favorite album is the house martins the people who grind themselves to death which i think is their best album it opens up with the title track, which actually I saw Paul Heaton last year and he played it, which was great. I can't put my finger on it, I think it's hilarious. I love the lyrics of it, it's really, really funny. The Light is Always Green is given a bit of a nod to the Beautiful South, as is the track build. Uh, the World's on Fire, a really good track with very good vocals by Heaton, he really hits the high notes in it. The two bigger singles off this were Build was actually a single, but the two other ones were Me and the Farmer and Five Get Over Excited. And it was only whenever I did a video with Ross Goodall that he pointed out that Five Get Over Excited was a bit of a steal from All You Need Is Love by The Beatles. I never realised it before, but now I can't get that out of my head. Uh, Johannesburg, again, a bit of a nod towards the beautiful south. Bow down and you better be uh, doubtful. Very, very good tracks. And I think this is their best album.
granted they only had two but they were very very good both of them so the people who grinned themselves to death gets my number one for 1987 okay um i hope you enjoyed that and i will put another poll up and i won't just put 80s ones up this time to see what i do next okay that's me for now and i hope to have another video quite soon all the best now bye bye